It's a Tuesday, and we'd have you believe it's sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows in the air. Paul Lyhander with you here. Graham Hill on the ones and the twos. Yes, it is a bright, beautiful day for football fans all across the great state of North Carolina, wherever also you happen to be listening to us today. Because right now, it can only go from worse to bad. Correct? In most instances, that's where we are lining ourselves up especially when it comes to the Carolina Panthers, of which I have read multiple, multiple articles, multiple, multiple comments, and heard multiple, multiple things. that The Carolina Panthers are the worst team in the NFL. Would you agree, Graham? Uh, yes. I mean, yes. It's hard, the to, it's hard to disagree, yes. yeah. The answer is yes. As our good friend Victoria, the producer of the Adam Gold Show, would say, which comes up at noon every day here on 99.9 The Fan, once again, the Panthers be pantherin. But Dave Canales, the golden retriever, is not worried about what fans think. He does not care what you think. His responsibility is to the coaches and to the players and to get things moving forward because half an hour after that game ended, that game ended, obviously. I say that game because I suppose that's how we could refer to it. But as he talked about that game with the media yesterday, we understand that Dave Canales is a different cat. And maybe I'm being a little bit under generous when it comes to calling him the golden retriever. Maybe he is that eternal optimist that everyone says, that relentless uh, beacon of hope when it comes to the Carolina Panthers. And he falls on the sword like no other which, to his credit, shows a lot of character. And maybe we do have the right coach in place. Maybe the Carolina Panthers do have, and I don't want to say we all the time, but I'm in this with y'all. I am. That maybe the Carolina Panthers do have the right coach. But maybe for it to go from worse to bad, we have to think about making some player changes. So maybe the pressure isn't all on Canales and all on that roster that's available to him. Maybe Dan Morgan's the one that's not sleeping at night. Remember, we, we were told in the offseason he got up early, worked out. You know, guy gets up super early, drinks a glass of water, goes, let's go. Claps his hands twice. All right, going to go to work. I have a feeling that he didn't sleep well. Dave Canales says everything is up for evaluation. We're looking at all of it. So I think my responsibility as the head coach is to say, okay, let's look at all the processes and we had a plan. We went into the, the into training camp, into the preseason with a plan in mind. Um, the the ramp up as we got closer to the season, and you know, felt good about the rep counts and all that. But I got to look at everything. You know, to to come out and to, in all phases have that much to fix. It starts with me. It starts with the process, and it starts with us combing through all of it to see. There's nothing you can do about it now, about the past. But looking forward, as you circle back around, is is there a way that we could have helped more? Was that David Tepper ch- chiming in in the middle of that answer saying, good, good, good response? <laughs> like the emperor in Star Wars? Good. Good, yes, my young Padawan. No, but here's the thing. When you're thinking about head coach Dave Canales' approach to not just this season, but just after this immediate blowout loss to begin the season, his focus is on improvement, as it should be. And despite the fans' frustration, which I'm sure everybody's feeling – not just yesterday morning, but probably still going into today as you make your way into the cubicle as you're in the bagel line. Thank That's you a deep wound on us. Sunday. Deep wound, Graham. It's a deep wound that's going to require just more than uh, kisses, hugs, and Band-Aids to make you feel better. Canales made it clear that he's turning out the noise and is focused on long-term development from both his coaching staff and players. My only question is, and I kind of talked about this prior to the season, is how long does that, I don't want to say excuse, but how long does that talking point get you when worst comes to worst? This, the Panthers are back to an 0 and 6 start for this all the, season. For all the dogs that are in Charlotte, for all the dogs that are within this Panthers organization that was assembled, Graham, I believe that Dave Canales has the longest leash of all the dogs. The longest leash. Because he does own it, and he comes across as incredibly even keeled. And everything that we've had to listen from Dave Canales and certainly a lot of the players, uh, there was a, they're feeling that disappointment too. But just as much as the fans are, which is, again, Dave Canales trying to tune those out. It is impossible to hear. This is, 
This is going to a rock concert, going to hear your favorite band, and everyone is saying the same thing. Play the hit. We want to hear that one song. And everybody's saying it. Play the deep cuts. And within this Carolina Panthers fan base, and this is not a reach by any means. I mean, this is me sitting in the chair, fully restrained, and all I got to do is just stick my hand out. They're disappointed and hurt and are calling for answers when you have an organization and you have a coach and it is not Canales' fault because this is the, the hand that he was dealt. And here's another This thing. is the quarterback he was dealt. It is not his fault. It truly isn't. He wants to get ready and all these kinds of things, and we can question a million things. But he is out there, and he has to deal with the fan base that is struggling to find out what is wrong after we have been told this is the cure. Well, not just the quarterback that he was dealt, but just the overall situation that he was dealt is as far as coming into a franchise that has dealt with mediocrity under David Tepper since 2018. Now, he's stuck with the task of he's playing a game not just on the field, but also in the locker room and in his office as far as building a culture versus immediate success. Canales seems committed to establishing a culture of growth, not quick wins. But when it comes to the Carolina Panthers, and just the NFL in general, does this patience pay off overall, or does it risk losing not just the fan base early in his tenure, but the stamp of approval from David Tepper? It's the NFL. That's uh, Graham Hill. Paul Leihander here. Next up, 99.9 The Fan. It's an NFL issue. Dan Campbell in Detroit was was just trashed at his opening news conference several years ago. It was four years ago, right? Dan Campbell, four years. They went through a losing season. It was bad. Um. Uh, He's like, we're going to bite their kneecaps off. And everyone just laughed. Oh, he's nuts. He's going to bite their kneecaps off. Now everyone talks about the Detroit Lions as a Super Bowl contender. Can Canales get that kind of vibe? I'm not saying he's going to take the Panthers into that process where we get to hear, you know, Cam Newton come out, Luke Keekley do a bunch of pregame kind of dramatic reads saying, oh, we're back and we're going to keep pounding and all that kind of stuff. We can be real about it. But as I talk about that hand that he was dealt, he was handed the card of Bryce Young. Dave Canales talked about the missed opportunities Bryce had in the Norley game. I would say from a footwork standpoint, I thought it was a solid day. Footwork. You know, as we went through the grades, um, looking at his footwork and the discipline of it, it was there. I think he missed a couple of throws. Um, I think that he's learning some of his guys, you know, and we've gotten all these reps and we've got to keep accumulating those reps, you know, but um, what I saw from him was, was just kind of like, you know, missing a few of his opportunities um, that he had there. Um, and I also have to give the Saints credit for covering us really well. And they made it hard, and they forced accurate throws. And that's something that we have to make sure we cash in on when we have those opportunities. So Dave gave Bryce an out by saying the Saints have a good defense. Okay, that's coach standing up for quarterback. But you opened up with footwork. This is like going on the first date and being asked, how was it? And they go, well, she was nice. <laughs> it was fine. You, clearly Dave Canales is not seeing what he wants to see in Bryce Young and getting live fire reps in the NFL and working on timing with teammates and things like that. The teammates are going to fall on their swords too. They will. Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen are stand-up guys. They are. I believe so. I'm a big Deontay Johnson believer. I'm a believer, Deontay Johnson. I will shout that from the trees. I said it in the preseason. And Adam Thielen is just a stand-up guy. Like, by all means, we believe he's a stand-up guy. I have no reason to discount that. They will fall on the sword, hey, we should have been more open. We should have been there for Bryce Young. And then you go back and look at the tape, and you hear what Dave Canales has said. With full honesty and transparency, he missed some golden opportunities. He missed, but he opened up with footwork. And that's a problem for me. That's a big problem for me. The devil's in the details, right? You do the small things so you can be great at all things. And if your quarterback can't get the small things done, you have a problem. Well, I mean, I, I guess coming out and starting with footwork in that in that statement is better than us coming right out and saying our quarterback sucked in week one because when you look at the statistical breakdowns, Bryce Young finished the game with very poor stats, showing struggles to adjust to the speed and complexity that the Saints defense was bringing. I can't believe I just used speed and complexity and the Saints it's, all But that's all real, in but one that's sentence. real though. That's real. That we saw that real Graham. But no, but just overall Bryce Young looked hesitant in the pocket. He held on to the ball too long. He overthrew or made bad reads on that or made a bad read on that interception and it just looked like he was 
overthinking his was he just overthinking his decisions or was he just that overwhelmed with the Saints defense? He saw him twice last year. This is the third time he's seen this team. I'm like, there's tape, there's preparation, there's coaching. Like you don't, there's there's one sole focus for every team and every week in the NFL. That's all you get. You have one game. Same way in college football, you have one game to prepare for, and you looked overwhelmed. That's a problem. Your coach is talking about footwork, how he missed windows. Dan Morgan went out and bought this guy a line. He went out and bought Dave Canales a line. He went out and traded for a number one receiver. He doesn't have the great tight ends that you would expect when it comes to, like, hands guys and the safety valve guys, but that's not the excuse. They couldn't pound the rock because they were from behind. They were playing from behind from play number one, so they couldn't run the ball. Canal said it himself. You can't run the ball when you're down four scores. You have to throw. You have to get big plays. Explosive plays is what they call it, right? Dynamic plays. They didn't have any of that stuff. There was nothing. Nothing to hang their hats on. It, it, there is going to be a point on Sunday when the Panthers play the Los Angeles Chargers in Charlotte, the home opener on September 15th, where Derek Brown will be sitting on the sidelines watching from afar or in a suite or whatever it is as they try to figure out what's going on with his knee, and the dude played nearly every snap in the loss against the Saints. So I'm not not questioning Derek Brown's motivation to play football in the NFL, but he's going to have to watch. There will be a point in the Panthers-Chargers game where the entire fan base will start either cheering or they will start booing this team. And you hope it's the one that I said first. Because there there will be a play, there will be a series of plays, something will happen on this field. And it may come as soon as the first drive if this team is not successful. And I hope it's not and I hope it's not one of those Bronx cheers, right? The Bronx cheer if it happens or whatever it is. I hope you just let them have it. You just let them have it. Because you go, this is not acceptable. But you've got bigger things to deal with now. I mean, listen, this team is snake bit already. Yeah. Brown getting hurt. Oh my God. I mean, how many more guys can get hurt in game one? I mean, they were making fun of the Panthers hard yesterday on the Pat McAfee show on not to overreact Monday. Not to overreact. And it's it, maybe a bit of sleep has helped a lot of the fans a little bit go, okay, 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 okay. It's one. We'll shake it off. There's 16 more. Bryce Young's over under, by the way, on, on betting. This season for yardage thrown is 3,200. So he had now has a margin of 161 yards to get to that 3,200 or 16 more games, assuming he stays healthy and plays every game and doesn't have a mysterious ankle injury. I just want to say, Paul, thank you because you have somehow got me excited to be in attendance at Bank of America on Sunday because I can't wait to see those two possible outcomes. And I'm just always the kind of guy where – until I see it with my own eyes in person, right up in front of me, that's when I can finally decide, or that's how I can tell just how bad it is. Make the note. And uh, Graham, watch your footwork. My God. All right. Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. The stadium home of the Carolina Hurricanes and NC State men's basketball team won't be known as PNC Arena any longer. A new video game offers a clue as to what the arena could be called moving forward. The signage outside the arena was taken down yesterday, and the Centennial Authority has a scheduled special meeting Thursday to approve a contract with a new partner for name and rights. Aaron Rodgers is eager to get back on the field and fill a first few in his return from an Achilles injury that cut his first season with the Jets short after only four snaps. There was also the first loss as Rodgers showed flashes of a four-time MVP form in a 32-19 loss to the San Francisco 49ers. It starts with us, NC State head coach Dave Dorn said yesterday when addressing the media following the blowout loss to Tennessee as the team looks ahead to Louisiana Tech this Saturday. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. Paul Ihander with you on this Tuesday morning. Everybody stand up, take a big stretch if you're sitting at the office. Just kind of reach up, reach out. 
It's a good way to do that. Just relax, hang out with us. Thanks for making us a part of your routines. I know it gets a little bit crazy this time of year with, you know, school and practices. If you've got kids or, you know, hey, if you happen to be organizing your tailgate or maybe you're the uh, head of your NIL collective. You know, it's that, it's that kind of year, right? It's great to uh, be a part of uh, that and keep things busy for you. You know, the week one of the NFL is now complete and in the books. And to be honest, I was looking for something to discuss this morning. And this was one of those obvious things that just sits on our desk. You know, what have we realized about the NFL and after week one? And what I keep thinking to myself is, if you can't complain about your quarterback, what is there truly to whine about? <laughs> it seems whatever it is across this great NFL nation of ours. If you're not talking about your QB and their QB play, you have really nothing to say. Um, Justin Fields in Pittsburgh, cast aside by Chicago, now starting and getting a win. But Daniel Jones, on the other hand, in New York, the Giants are on the hamster tr- on the hamster treadmill, right? They keep talking about Daniel Jones as like this guy and are there expectations of this guy and then there aren't. But they boo him because, like, oh, we only scored six points. But you never hear Brian Dayball going, you know, that's uh, it's it, you don't hear the Dave Canales stuff from Dayball like you should, I think. Like, I'll give credit to Canales for kind of going, hey, it's on us and this. And it's like, yeah, it's no, we're not talking about quarterback competition. Yeah, I'm not really talking about it. I got Drew Locke back there. But, you know, are you really going to start Drew Locke? Is that the point for the New York Giants to, to make happen? And last night going to bed after the San Francisco Jets game, you all realize that, Brock Purdy's in line for a monster cor- monster contract, but Brock Purdy, for me, works really well in a system with a lot of talent, yet Aaron Rodgers out there, if he can have some renaissance years, could be in line for a big payday too, but last night the Jets are were not in rhythm at all. Yeah, he showed flashes of why he's a four-time MVP, but I just feel like for 266 yards of total offense in his first game since the 2023 opener, like that's fine. But that's not going to get you sustainable results in a 18 week season. Yeah, they've <laughs> 18 <laughs> weeks or 17 weeks. I, I'm still confused. No, you're 18 with the buy. Boom. 18 Let's with go. the buy. But see, last night, you know, I had to sweat it out. Again, I stayed up late for this one. I sweated out, and I would like to thank Robert Sala for putting Brees Hall in there for a couple more carries late in that fourth quarter, which pushed him over 54 yards. See, I bet for entertainment purposes only. But Brees Hall needed 25, 25 yards rushing. This is how bad it was for the Jets yesterday. Brees Hall, on, the, on the, the, the game special, so to speak, through my friends at FanDuel, Brees Hall had to gain 25 yards rushing in the first half and 25 yards rushing in the second half. <coughs> after they pulled Aaron Rodgers for Tyrod Taylor in the fourth quarter with about six minutes to go after San Francisco kicked the field goal and put it out of reach, Tyrod Taylor, on his first two plays, handed off to Brees Hall. Brees Hall went for three yards and then ended up going for 15, which gave him 29 yards rushing in that second half, of which I hit, and I know a lot of you did too. A lot of you out there got that extra 29 yards in that second half and hit. That was the only happiness I had after last night's game. I couldn't complain about a quarterback, and then I remembered, oh, Aaron Rodgers wasn't very good. He just wasn't very good last night. Without Alan Lazard, Jets offense was pretty junky. It's like they couldn't figure out how to use Garrett Wilson for some reason after the first quarter. Yeah, only six receptions for 60 yards and zero touchdowns for Garrett Wilson. I was getting ready to – thank you, Paul, for stopping me. I was getting ready to say this Jets offense has enough firepower where Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to do too much, but then you see what they did last night, and you're exactly right. It was just Alan Lazard with six receptions as well, but he had 89 yards and two touchdowns. That was really the only one leading that offense outside of Brees Hall. It's uh, week one. This is not about overreactions or reactions by any means. It's just kind of like what have we learned about our favorite teams? And again, not everybody's favorite team is the Panthers. I mean, we talk about the Panthers here. Based here in Carolina, we want to make sure that you're dialed in. And based on yesterday and, and again, reading all the comments on the YouTube pages when we do talk about the Panthers, there's seriously a lot of heat behind it. But there are a lot of other things that happen in week one for your favorite teams. Look, can I say one thing about what I learned from week one of the NFL season? I feel like veteran players aren't looking like veteran players so much. How so? As far as, well, the perfect example, 
Deshaun Watson, which he has a lot more oh, issues gosh. just on the field or off the field that he does on the field. And then Kirk Cousins, as I mentioned yesterday, who's getting up there in age. We talked about it just now with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, look at what some of these rookie players are not rookie players, some of these two year players, and I'm about to upset Carolina Panthers fans even more when I say this. Look at what CJ Stroud was able to do. Anthony Richardson didn't put up that that impressive a stat line, but he had some great throws. Caleb Williams, Justin Fields are having some great debuts. Or not great debuts, but I mean they the best that they could with the teams that they're playing for. The only veteran player that really impressed me at all out of week one was, of course, Patrick Mahomes, which I feel like, you know, you just can't put him in the category. How quickly you discount Josh Allen, the Baker of Mayfield. Baker Mayfield looked like great point. Underrated, underrated performance. He was full magic. He was full magic, and it. (laughs) I mean, Dave Canales. I mean, you rode that Tampa Bay, and you may have fixed Baker Mayfield. You may have fixed that entire Tampa offense which is probably why you see Panthers fans frustrated after that week one performance. You're like, what in the hell happened? You're like, what happened? You took old Panthers and made them good. So let's make the current Panthers awesome again. Let's do that. Let's do that. San Francisco, by the way, just fine without Christian McCaffrey. I mean, McCaffrey, they were trying to get him less work anyway, but he did just fine. <laughs> Sam Darnold getting a win, too, in Minnesota. Yeah, who would have had that on the... What is happening? Who would have had that on their bingo card? What is happening? Yeah, the bear, the Bears Bears get a win, but they really didn't do anything to earn it. It was all defense. Yeah. Like Monsters of the Midway 3.0 at this point. I mean, they locked, they loaded up there. Hey, listen, if you're going to win, win on defense. That's fine. The, the Denver Broncos did it in, in Peyton Manning's Super Bowl win with Denver. That was all about Vaughn Miller. That wasn't about Peyton Manning. 